the perfect cinema rig for your mirrorless camera doesn't exist. Hold up. Hold my freaking beer because I have devised what might be the ultimate cinema rig for almost any mirrorless DSLR camera. That means the Panasonic S52X, the Sony A7S III, ZV-1, Canon R5, a totally modular system that gives you extended battery time, raw recording, pro level sound quality, and the ability to strip it back down to the camera only in a matter of seconds. And that's the key to this setup, modularity. Don't need the audio options? Don't use it. Don't want a bigger battery? Take it away. The power is yours. Now, in my previous video, I utilized the Rigid Pro Cinebase to make my S52X into a cinema camera. And this is an excellent solution. The only problem is it doesn't really let you deconstruct it quickly if you just want to go from camera only to something with more robust cine features. So this is where the Savage Cinema build comes in. Links to everything I've used in the description. Now I'm going to be building out my S52X, but this is going to work with most mirrorless cameras. First, let's start with the camera cage. Now it's important that this cage features an Arca Swiss base, as this will allow us to quickly attach and detach from the rest of the rig. In this case, there are multiple small rig options that will suit this. I'm using the Black Mamba small rig cage for the S52X. Then we need this L bracket. Now, this will act as our base to which we can build out this rig. On it, we're gonna put one of these small rig Arca Swiss quick release base plates, which will hold the camera body. Now, we want a decent power option. Ultimately, if you want to use your camera for extended periods through the day, or you want to power additional accessories, the internal batteries are just not going to cut it. So I'm using this small rig V-mount adapter. I like this one because it has two DTAP ports on it, but the slightly larger version will also work fine. We screw the V-mount plate onto the back of the L bracket. Now this is going to power everything. If you don't have V-mount batteries and want something more compact, you could try this Sony MPF plate from Small Rig instead. For my V-mounts, I'm using the Core SWX batteries because they're nice and compact and don't extend above the V-mount plate. Also, as a little alternate hack, if you want to quickly mount and unmount your battery plates, you can connect them to an Arca Swiss quick release base plate as well and then use this slightly smaller, slightly less robust L bracket plate to mount your camera. It's lighter than the original L bracket I talked about, and because it has the Arca Swiss mounting on both sections of its L, you can use it to slide on your battery plate or tripod plate. Everything else functions pretty much the same, but it may not suit heavier setups. You'll need a dummy battery to DTAP or a dummy battery to DC cable to go from your camera to the V-mount plate, which I'm doing here. Now, the biggest problem with a mirrorless camera setup like this is audio. You don't have XLR jacks going straight into the camera. Now, the Panasonic, Sony, and Canon all have XLR hot shoe options, but they all have the same problem. Once you put the XLR adapter on a hot shoe, the adapter gets in the way of the rest of the rig. The other issue is, unless you've got the GH7 and the new XLR adapter from Panasonic, all of these other hot shoe adapters don't have 32-bit float recording. Now, 32-bit float allows you to recover audio recorded too loudly or too quietly in post-production, which is incredibly useful when you're recording audio in situations where it's gonna fluctuate greatly. Recording in 32-bit float is the ultimate audio insurance policy. So rather than look for an XLR hot shoe to put on, we're gonna buy this. The Zoom F3. It has two full-size XLRs, it records 32-bit float to a mini SD card, and it can send a stereo line level output back into your camera's 3.5 millimeter jack if you need it. Now we buy one of these Condor Blue quick release plates attach one side to the back of the Zoom F3 and screw the other to the back of the L plate. Now the Zoom F3 sits neatly between the camera and you have 32-bit float recording to XLR ports with phantom power and you still have room 
for our top handle. The great thing about this is if you don't need to record clean audio, you can simply remove the Zoom F3. You can power it with two AA batteries, but for long-term shooting, I like to use a USB-C to DTAP cable, which will keep the F3 charged for the whole day without having to do any battery swaps. Now we've got our power and audio sorted. Let's move on to visuals and top handle. I never have a cinema rig build out without some type of top handle. For something like the Panasonic S5, this Condor Blue Pro Blade top handle is nice because it provides the ability to record into an SSD, which is part of the top handle itself, which I'm doing right now. However, there are many great, much more affordable top handles from SmallRig and Ewer, which will do the job just fine. You'll need a small NATO rail and a NATO compatible top handle to be able to attach and remove this as smoothly as possible from the camera cage. I like to mount my monitor using something that gets it on the front of the top handle rather than right on top of it which just makes the monitor a bit lower profile and means your rig doesn't get too high. Now, this one is the RE locating pin version to monitor mount from small rig. Also, if you don't want a top handle and want your whole setup to be a little lower profile, you can also use this NATO to monitor mount and mount that directly to the NATO rail on your cage for a smaller, slimmer setup. With these small flip out LCD screens, you're going to eventually need a monitor. And if you have a camera that can output a raw signal, then I strongly recommend a monitor that can also record that raw output signal. If you want the best image quality, raw recording is the way to go. You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Many Sony's can output ProRes RAW, while Panasonic S5's can do both ProRes RAW and B-RAW. I much prefer the flexibility of B-RAW, so if you have an S5 II or S5 Original, I would go with the 5-inch Blackmagic Video Assist. And if I had an FX3 or A7S3 or FX30, I'd get the Atomos Ninja V or Ninja Ultra. Your monitor can be powered from your V-mount plate using a dummy battery to D-tap or a dummy battery to DC cable for continuous power. This always feels better than a separate battery charging the monitor. On the bottom of the L plate, I put a long Manfrotto tripod plate and you will have to screw this in the back, but it is still totally secure. Finally, if you're thinking about extra stability, and where to place, say, a microphone on this setup, I also like to add a side handle. I use this NATO rail and attach it to my cage, and then this small rig NATO side handle. I place my shotgun microphone on top of the handle, and I have the perfect setup. It can record 32-bit float audio, it can record B-RAW externally, and best of all, if you just want to go back to using your camera only, all you have to do is remove the top handle and remove the camera, and you can use your camera in its most stripped down form. Need to rig it back up? It literally takes a few seconds and it's back to being a fully functional cinema rig. Chef's kiss for flexibility. Personally, I am using this rig with autofocus lenses, so I don't need a follow focus or something like that, but if you did, get yourself some rails and a small rig rail mount like this one. Attach one of these Manfrotto plates to the rail mount and now you can use this cinema rig with a rail system. It could not be simpler. If you want flexibility, modularity, and all the features that your camera can offer, and then some, this is the perfect rig. Unless you want something super lightweight. But cinema rigs are generally heavy, and generally, that's a good thing. Now, if you don't need the audio solution, you could go much smaller and lose the L plate and use one of these small rig V-mount adapter plates, which also fit to the Arca Swiss mount on your camera cage. But it is quite a lot less stable when compared to that L bracket. If you want to build the perfect cinema rig, links to all these parts are in the description below. And using them allows me to continue building new cinema rigs for you. If you want to see me create a cine rig for the S52X using the new Rigid Pro Cine base, you can see that here. And please, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
but also hit that notification bell or you will never again see me in your feed. I will be but a ghost in the YouTube darkness, calling out in despair as the algorithm swallows me whole. As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker, and I'll see you when I see you.